we know voter suppression exists when any voter is discouraged from or prevented from voting, whether it's intentional or uh, malevolent. But we do know that long lines have the very real effect of denying people the right to vote. And so we are being very vigilant about watching for well-resourced re um, po polling places so that voters have the ability to cast their ballots. We do know in South Georgia there were some reports of voter intimidation, and we know that there were reports of militias this weekend, but the reality is that should not prevent a single person from voting. We are paying attention. We are gonna be well-resourced to support voters, and we hope that no voter decides to stay home because they're afraid. As I keep saying, don't panic. We've got this election. We just need to show up and keep our eye on the mission, and that is casting our ballots. I would say that the most uh, malicious bad actor that we have seen has been misinformation. The misinformation about the safety of voting by mail, misinformation about how to go about participating in our election. And sadly, we have seen lawsuits uh, that were trying to make certain everyone had the right to vote. We saw them challenged by the Secretary of State. And that means that voters, for example, who've been disadvantaged by the, by the Postal Service being weaponized, have to now make certain they personally return their ballots because they can't count on the Postal Service and they can't count on a court ordered extension of the time to count their ballots. They've got to get it in by the end of day tomorrow. And so by and large, we have seen some improvements, but Georgia has a lot of room to grow when it comes to making certain that access to democracy is available to all of its voters. We know that the most important thing tomorrow is to make certain that people in line, stay in line, and everyone who is eligible can cast their ballot. So we have poll observers who are going to be around the state making certain that voters have all the information they need, that if they have questions, they have answers, that if they get thirsty or get hungry, that they're, they're called line warming um, exercises. We're gonna do what we can to make sure that every voter can stay in line. But we're also going to be providing information if they have questions, uh, giving them contact information such as 866-HOUR-VOTE. This is a nonpartisan organization, a consortium of civil rights groups that come together every election to ensure that voters get the best information. So 866-HOUR-VOTE. We'll be making sure that that information is available to voters. And we encourage voters today and tomorrow to get those absentee ballots turned in. More than half a million are outstanding. That means that those are votes that cannot be counted unless they are cast by tomorrow. Uh, and we're gonna just be doing our, our job of making sure that no matter where you are in the state of Georgia, we protect your right to vote. We have seen growth among communities that were largely discounted as voters. We have seen increases in black participation and Latino participation. I saw a statistic yesterday of 114% increase in Asian American Pacific Islander participation. We know young people are showing up at great numbers and we're seeing a diversity in how they're voting. We saw more communities of color take advantage of voting by mail than did so in 2016. Part of that came about because of the education work that we did in 2018 and the work that was done during the primary this year. And so we're seeing more voters take advantage of all of the, in theory, great ways that you can vote in Georgia. We just need to make sure that theory always meets practice, and that's why Fair Fight exists. So we know that the demographic changes in Georgia have been happening for more than a decade, but there's always a lag time between demographic changes and electoral changes. And so as we see the speeding up of not only the change in demography, but the aging of that change, Georgia has a very high concentration not only of communities of color, but of young people of color who are coming of age. And so as that happens, we are going to continue to see voters who tend to be more progressive in their beliefs, tend to be more democratic in their voting patterns, and as they get older, tend to be more active and engaged in their elections. And so while this year, I believe, is a year where we can demonstrate how competitive Georgia is, I think as we go through the next few cycles, we'll continue to see a growth in the democratic group of voters, and we will continue to see a diminishing number of Republicans in the state of Georgia. But that's going to take time, so no one should believe that this is something that happens in two years, and four years, and six years. This is an evolution. It took 130 years for Republicans to elect a governor. It's not going to take that long for Democrats to elect more de Democrats statewide, but we know that nothing happens overnight. We're going to keep working at it, and we're going to get it done. New registration tends to have between a 20 and 30 percent yield in terms of registering does not mean you're going to vote. And so we need to stop thinking of it as a one-to-one -one translation, but the more people you have available in the pool, the higher likelihood you are to see them participate in the elections 
And given the sheer volume of those who've registered in a very concentrated period of time, we expect to see a higher number of those voters actually turn out. So instead of being at the low end on 20%, I expect us to get closer and closer to the 25, 30% mark, possibly higher. Democrats had, we led the state for 130 years. We lost the governor's mansion, we got, lost the governor's office and the state Senate in 20, 2002. We lost the House in 2004, but we had Democrats elected statewide even through 2006. 2010 was the first year you had complete Republican control. A decade later, we are on the cusp of changing that. And so what I would say is that, again, the demographic changes aren't instantaneous and there's a lag time between the change in demography and the change in power. But I would tell anyone who doubts that it's coming that they are not looking at the numbers. We know they are, which is why we've seen Donald Trump in the state of Georgia more times than I've seen any other Republican candidate who wasn't coming here to stump for someone else. We are a battleground state. And what people need to remember is that battleground state means we have to fight for every vote, Democrat, Republican. And we've got a lot of independents who are deciding which way they're going to break. Being a battleground doesn't mean you've decided what you are. It means you're fighting it out to figure out what you're going to be. And I'm putting my money on Team Blue.